In 1963, Gary Sobers became only the second man after Keith Miller to make 300 runs and take 20 wickets in a test series. He would repeat the effort three years later, again in England, and he remains the only player to have achieved that double twice. Gary Sobers was the man. Um, in the 60s when I was born and early 70s, everyone aspired to be a Gary Sobers because he it means if you were so you were always involved. He was the main batsman, he was a quality bowler, and he was a high-class fieldsman. So he was the man that really inspired me. Gary Sobers was certainly the best cricketer I ever played against. You know, he was four players rolled into one. You know, he's a great batsman, great fieldsman. Uh, probably five players rolled into one because he could bowl left-handed Chinaman, left arm or left-hand orthodox. He could also bowl quickly, could take the new ball. He was just a magic player. Look. If he was around today, he'd be an absolute sensation. In 1966, Sobers, now captain, led the West Indies to a 3-1 series victory over England. He made 722 runs, including three centuries, and averaged over 103. He also took 20 wickets, held 11 catches, and won all five tosses. In 1966, he dominated that series. You could look at his figures with bat and ball, and his catching round the corner to Lance Gibbs, uh, or wherever he was fielding. He, he was a wonderful, wonderful natural cricketer. West Indies at Lords in 19, 1966 were 90-odd for five in their second innings. The lead then was about nine, so they were in real trouble. All the main batsmen had gone, and David Holford, who is his first cousin, uh, all-rounder, playing in only a second test match, very inexperienced, comes in. Lords, big crowd, and West Indies in trouble, England on top, and first couple of deliveries, Sobers could see that Holford was a bit nervous. And he came down the pitch and said, what's the problem? He said, look, this is just like Spartan, which is a club team back home. The bowling is no better than the club bowlers we have at home. Look at the conditions, look at the pitch. Just play as if you're playing club cricket at home. And that relaxed uh, Holford right away. And this is the way Sobers played cricket. Test cricket, club cricket, division one cricket, first class cricket, didn't matter to him. He played it as if it was just a game. And uh, he was so relaxed, had, had no nerves, whatever. Sobers was accused of reckless captaincy in early 1968 when he set England a target of just 215 runs to win the fourth test. Gary went in and he'd made an amazing declaration and I think he'd left England to get uh, 215 in 165 minutes. Well, that's asking for a lot and I think Colin Carney wasn't inclined to go for it. The boycott of all people was. In they went and England won the match. And of course, in the West Indies, uh, Gary was nearly horn, hung, drawn and quartered for this, but he said he threw the match away. Well, he didn't throw the match away. England won it. But he made a sporting gesture to keep the game alive and to keep cricket alive. And I think that was, that was, a, that was part of, of Sobers. He just loved the game. Sobers responded in the fifth test with another stirring all-round performance. He made 152 and 95 not out and bowled 68 overs for six wickets. But England held on, and the series was lost. A lot of people will have different views about Sir, Gar Sir Garfield Sobers as a captain because of the fact that Sir Garfield Sobers pretty much gambled a lot on his captaincy. In that, Sir Garfield Sobers would make declarations that other people, more conservative captains, wouldn't make. Because Sir Garfield Sobers knew his ability, and perhaps he thought others had his ability as well within the team. The final six years of Sober's test career were characterized somewhat by criticism and controversy. Gary Sobers may not be considered by many to have been the greatest captain of all time, but I can tell you that in my experience, every single thing he did, he did in the best interest of the game. He was always trying to win. He always tried to score his runs fast. He always tried to get wickets when he was bowling. He never thought about averages in, uh, in any aspect of his game. And then to be able to sit with him uh, at the end of the day was just a privilege. After passing 7,000 career runs at home against India, Sobers joined a rest of the world team to tour Australia. In the third match, he made 254, an innings Don Bradman described as the finest he'd ever seen. 
And some of the shots he played off Dennis Lilly in that game were just unbelievable, especially the straight drives. Because they were just going, Dennis hadn't even followed his, got through his follow through and it went back past him. And I remember when I was in the second inning and Australia was really on top and we needed two players to consolidate and to get runs so that we couldn't get back into the game. So I had to put my head down and back. And I went on the first over, Dennis was bowling again. And the first over, the first few balls hit the middle of the bat. And I knew that once the first few hit the middle of the bat, I knew it was going to be in for a good day. And I, I, I started to play and Dennis got more heated up and started to bowl short and short and I started to get really on top of him. I started to see the ball bigger and bigger and everything started to flow. And it was one of those days where you could do nothing wrong. And I thought that was a tremendous innings. I mean, it, it was just poetry in motion. This guy was this guy was, was something else. I don't, I'm, I, I'm not so sure we'll see um, someone like him again. I hope we do, but it will be, and that will be some player. <laughs>